Leo Lulu is pretty good. You should check her out. Uh, my favorite style is Red Lips right now. She's pretty good. You ever heard of Alexis Texas? Yes. Yeah. She's washed as fuck. But yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. In high school, she was the talk. I know your favorite's Mia Khalifa. What was our video about again? <laughs> One of my top favorite albums, Power Slave, 1984. This is a very raw sounding album. Raw, like Gordon Ramsay raw. Compared to, like I know we started you out with the um, Somewhere in Time. Which I think is still was a good idea. I really enjoyed Somewhere in Time. So that's that's kind of my context, my really only context for this album. Because this was my third full-length Maiden album. Of course, I, you highly recommended Dance of Death to me. So I had to give that one a listen. I know. If I understand, that's your favorite Maiden album? That is my favorite Maiden album. Why? Is it because they put so much work into it? It's because effort? it's just the most complex, well-written album they've ever produced. And that's how you really feel about it, right? <laughs> I actually didn't think it was that bad compared yeah. to Somewhere in Time. Okay, yeah, no, it didn't yeah. come near Somewhere That's in where Time. That Somewhere in Time is my really only context for Prime Maiden, and from what we heard in the comment section, it's between Somewhere in Time and Power Slave for mm -hmm. their their best album. We'll get into the the first one, Aces High. All right. As an opener, I still think this is great with the bass chords and and the guitar playing the main riff. And the drums hitting the same time with the bass chords to really start it off. It's just kind of a cool feel too. This song is about uh, World War II when Germany did air raids on Britain because they're British. Mm. So it's definitely a cool song and you probably feel more connected to it if you're from England. But I think as a starter, just the energy, the intensity, and especially the way they ended it. I'd have to give it 8.5. That's an interesting take because I gave it an eight. So that we're, oh, we're almost, there, really? almost there. So here's why I gave it an eight. Wow. It's a it's a great opener track. I think this is this was really designed to kick off an album, and I think it really did that. The strong build up with the beginning riff, like you talked about, and I love how it, it kind of reminds me of Castlemore in Time, where it's like the beginning riff, and then it kicks into the main part of the mm -hmm. song. So mm -hmm. that was cool. That was um, that's a common theme I'm seeing, and I saw a couple of themes on here, a couple of comparisons to Somewhere in Time. The great outro where they slowed it down. I really appreciate that because I feel like the one knock on Maiden songs is it's kind of the same pace the whole whole time. Which yeah, I was it was a breath of fresh air to see that's the not what they did on every song here. So again, that's a eight eight out of ten for me. There's stickers falling off again. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about this. So I understand there are probably going to be a lot of British voters that watch this video or British <laughs> citizens, but the U.S. citizens, please fucking vote. Just do it. Vote. I did. It's not like it takes all day to do it. Just in vote. person, too. By the way, yeah, I voted by mail. Bush, don't, don't, don't listen to me. Just, to, just <laughs> vote in person. Because I, I, to be fair, I live in Florida, so I'm, I'm here in New York, so, so that's why I had to vote by mail. But vote in person. Two minutes to midnight, which is a meme song. A meme song. Well, it's a meme song because on the internet and also because my dad, like, whenever it's like 11:58, and he's like. Oh, it's two minutes. It's two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> this song is about Jesus was born, and I think it was uh, King Harold. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it was King Harold, and he ordered to kill all the newborn babies. So he did late term abortions, and that's what the song is about. The song is about late term abortions. <laughs> no, it's about, long story short. It's about them sending people to go kill the kids. Ah, uh, okay. That's what the song's about. As a start of the song, it's great. I love the guitar and the drums. Halfway through the song, it kind of drags on a little bit. But as a whole, I think the song's still pretty great. So I gave it um, seven. I gave it seven. A seven for two minutes to midnight? Yeah. I see the pitchforks in the comments right now. <laughs> Apple needs to add a pitchfork emoji. This is an anthem. This uh -oh. is like, this is an all-time anthem. This is the song wow. that Iron Man suits up to and goes and fucks up with terrorists in Afghanistan. <laughs> It was cool how it was a little bit slower than the other Maiden songs, at least not fast paced. Like with the Maiden rhythms, I feel like it's dun 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 dun, you know, like, yeah, the, like the, up, yep. that. That's kind of how I feel yep. like most of the, these songs are. This one is a little bit change up, which I really appreciate. This is a total workout song. Now, because it's two minutes to midnight, I don't feel like I can give it a rating because I'm not as experienced in, in the Maiden world. As, as to be able to raise song like two minutes to midnight so i give it an untouchable out of 10 oh wow okay interesting surprise i can't rate it i'm not ready to rate it yet <laughs>
I don't know. We, we did this one already, but... I, we did. We did. We'll <laughs> no. get into that. Lost for Words is one of their few instrumentals that they've done. The way it starts, the energy it brings, the song change-ups, and then instantly going back to the original. And I love the beginning with the... I'm pretty sure it's Nico, the drummer, doing the countdown, hitting the cymbal, like the one, two, three, and then it kicks in. As a whole, I've always enjoyed this song, and I think it's a great addition to the album, so I gave it a nine. So I was... A little bit harsh on this song when we heard it the first time. Actually, I wasn't even that harsh. I think I said it was it was okay. Yeah, it was. I think that's what I like said, it, yeah. right? I don't remember exactly what I said, but but that's why I kind of stopped our reaction format because I feel like one listen reviews are bad enough, but the reaction where you kind of are pressured to just say something while you're listening to it is even worse. That's why I decided to switch to a review format. I did like it more the second time. Steve okay. Harris kicked ass like usual, but I think that what stole the show is the gritty but melodic guitar work. It's really well structured too. Even down to the runtime, I think it was a perfect runtime. Yeah. For me, I don't know what I gave it the first time, but <laughs> this time, this time it's an eight and a half. Oh, all right, cool. Wow, that's awesome. Two of our most trash videos are I, our I most know. viewed videos. Most viewed. You should still watch and like it. Yeah, Flash of the Blade. So this one is about the singer, Bruce Dickinson. Besides being a pilot, he's also passionate about fencing, and he's done fencing his whole life. Ah. So I think the thing that steals this song is the focus on the beginning with the guitar. It's a little extended more than I thought it would be. I think the runtime was a little long on it. It's still a good song, though, but in terms on this album, it's one that I'd put lower. So I, I give it a seven and a half. I'm glad we're on the same page. Okay. So, cool. so I enjoyed the beginning guitar riff, <laughs> like just like you said. Yeah. Uh, it's a solid song, but to me, it just sounds like formulaic maiden. Mm -hmm. You know, dun -dun 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 -dun. oh. So, <laughs> so for that reason, it, it just wasn't. It, it's not bad by any means. I I enjoy that. It's good, but it doesn't stand out among a packed. Uh, really well done album so far, so I gave it a six. I can't really, I can't be mad about that. Yeah, I know That's someone's right. gonna be mad about. It. Let me know how mad you are at me in the comments, and also like the video. <laughs> <laughs> well, number five personal favorite is the Duelist. This song just fits perfect. I mean, it starts out. So when the song first started out, remember the first time I listened to it, I was like, all right, you know, because this is coming off Flash of the Blade too, where I was kind of like. My energy kind of came down a little bit about, I think it's a minute 30 in the break with the bass mm -hmm. and the guitar and they're doing the, 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 the chords and the notes together that like got my attention instantly. I was like, holy shit. And I focused more in on what Steve was doing for this song and the guitar and Nico, the drums. And as a whole, this song is one of my favorite. It's a great song. So I, I give it a nine. Okay. Um, so this, this song, which is funny cause it, the rhyme of the ancient mariners on this this sounds like a hardcore sea chanty okay. um the guitar work i think stands out the most but shout out to whoever mixed this album do you know who mixed the album yeah i forgot his name he just died recently actually that is how you mix bass because you could really hear it clearly being a dream theater fan i also really appreciated the instrumental bridge there and they made the most out of it there was no jordan rudis running rampant and putting b noises in the middle of it like i said it, in a pretty packed with with some good stuff album this doesn't really come to the top for me so that's a seven all right it's better than a six better, better. yeah it was better than the last one yeah mm -hmm. uh, back in the village another song on here that isn't a bad song by any means but it's definitely not one of my top picks it's a solid song but it's a little repetitive, I think. I feel like it's it feels kind of like a little bit of a filler. And the only main saving grace for it is how the ending uh, transitions into Power Slave. Mm. So, yeah, I heard that. I don't have too much to say about it other than I just give it a 7. That's actually exactly what I gave it. <laughs> yeah. but, um, so the intro guitar on it, I, I agree with most of what you said, but the intro with the guitar sounds a lot like um, Joker and the Thief by Wolf Mother. I don't know if you heard that song. Never heard that song. It's in The Hangover, but I, I like that song, so... I know it's pop right. rock. I know it's pop rock. Forgive me, but but, <laughs> but I do like that. So, but other than that, yeah, it wasn't uh, too much of a standout for me. But I do like the the resonating like I don't know how to describe it. The the pluck sound that Steve puts on the bass Oops. this time instead of just the standard finger style bass. His technique is he hits up with his fingers. So it like slaps the string mm -hmm. to give it like a gallop sound or the pluck. That's another way he does it to 
break through the two guitar sounds. That's cool. I re- it so. really stood out to me for that. So yeah, again, seven out of yeah. ten. Okay. Power Slave. This song is a good song. <laughs> I really, I really do enjoy this song. This song definitely had an Egyptian feel to it with the beginning. Right when I was starting to lose a little interest they cut to a different part like and the second half of the song is just fantastic the bass runs wild the guitars run wild the drum the drums keep a consistent beat with throwing fills in there to keep you interested and then it just ends fantastically i have to give it probably a nine i think this is where the album gets good in my opinion this is like i usually want to start the album on fire and they they did the first two were pretty good but this is i think so far when i was listening to it this was my favorite up until oh, wow. the last track which we'll get to but i love the haunting intro and i think it's really the first departure from their classic sound on the whole album they they go pretty safe with again the dun 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 dun. Ah! so <laughs> yeah those notes pretty good <laughs> yeah thanks. in my opinion the best songs are either spacey or really gritty and like grungy production and very zeppelin like you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if you're not going to go with the somewhere in time spacey futuristic sound, it's got to sound raw as fuck. And that's, I think, they kind of added elements of both. But I think this is a really gritty, hardcore song. Another great workout song. And the acoustic bridge in there, mm-hmm. is, I love. It's, a, again, another nice change up. So I'm going to stick with your rating, 9 out of 10. Oh, wow. That's that was awesome. great. Rhyme the Ancient Mariner, which is off... I'm sure most Maiden fans know, but if you don't know, it's based off the book or the short story, I should say, Rhyme and the Ancient Mariner. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, now you know that one. So this song is a trip. On your favorite rocket ship. Going, oh, going through, through the, the sky. I'm going to reuse that joke again okay, as good. many times as possible. First listen, it's good. Second listen, it's great. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, it's fantastic. So I'm at a disadvantage here because I only listened to it once so far. Yes. Okay. <laughs> they do a really good job of telling the story too. That's what just the sheer amount of work they put into this. Like I told you they wanted to get that British voice actor, but he wanted too much money, so they got somebody different. The bridge in the middle where they do the haunting bass line and the creaking ship for the part where everybody's dying on the ship. To the awesome bass line to the crescendo and then it explodes and it continues the rest of the song and then eventually transitions back to how it began which the beginning also kind of has an egyptian feel to it because of the amount of work put in the storytelling and the instrumentals i had to give it a 10 me too <laughs> yeah. oh really i gave it a 10 so all right we're finally on the same page this is the first time that i think bruce really added a huge amount to the song I, I respect the hell out of the ability to do the operatics, but it would be, and I don't know, it sounds hypocritical of me because James Labrie does the same shit, which yeah. is really annoying, but I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that, but I respect how hard it is to do. Uh, this song is the first where I really liked his flow, his, his I don't know what they call it in rock music, but in <laughs> yeah. rap they call it flow. flow yeah. I really like that. Um, chorus was great too. I think his work really stood out to me at least the, the most on this whole album was this one. I love the transition with the bass and I also love the length being a dream theater fan. Yeah. Very dream theater like. That's what I thought, yeah. This is one that's going on the playlist, the the, the white boy playlist. Oh, is it actually? So, All I'm right. going to give this one a 10 as well. Oh man, that's that's a Oh, and also this pressure. this song includes the first beat switch of all time. Right? <laughs> yeah. What is, is there a word for that in rock? I guess you um I guess a break in transition, break. maybe, you could okay. say. Beat Switch just Sounds rolls better. off the tongue yeah. better. What do you think overall? Being my second favorite Maiden album and just having the raw, fantastic instrumental sound to it, I'd probably have to say nine. This being my third total Maiden album, I'd say it's not as good as Dance of Death. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. So we started with Somewhere in Time because we knew that that was going to be one that I would like yep. guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Then we did this one because not only did they recommend it to us in our Somewhere in Time video, but because this is also one of their most beloved albums. A lot of people consider this to be their best. Me being from the kind of rap world, I'd say I did prefer Somewhere in mm-hmm. Time. I did think it was a little bit better, but still a lot of great memorable tracks on this one, especially the the closing track, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. 
So I will give this one a seven and a half. All right. That's not bad.